Shabbat Shalom, good morning, good afternoon. See a couple more people have logged in. Welcome to Open Temple's virtual yoga studio. We'll get started in just about two minutes. Please unfold your mat or your towel, whatever it is that you're practicing on today. I suggest that you have access to two blocks or thick hardcover books. Those will serve you well. And if you can grab a pillow from somewhere around your house, that will be great too. Okay, we are gonna go ahead and get started. Shabbat Shalom, good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to Open Temple's virtual yoga studio. My name is Zach Lasker and I have the honor of being Open Temple's executive director and also our resident yoga instructor. Um, since the year 2021 kicked off, we are devoting our yoga practice to the exploration of a tradition in Judaism called Musar. For those of you who are joining us for the first time since we started this particular exploration, Musar is a tradition of soul development, really developing our character, our attributes, those tools that we need to be decent human beings with potentially even the cherry on the Sunday emerging as menches. That's the best way to describe it. And the teachers and scholars of Musar break down this tradition into a series of approximately 18 different soul traits. And so far we've looked at traits like humility and patience and compassion, gratitude, equanimity, order, and today we've arrived at the soul trait of enthusiasm, or in Hebrew, it's called zerizut. And to unpack that idea a little bit more, enthusiasm is explained not just as showing up to be your best inner cheerleader, but really showing up with a sense of zeal, with a sense of urgency to act, and commitment to your practice and to the people who are around you. In yoga, the attribute that most um, closely aligns with this idea of enthusiasm is tapas. Those of you who've been practicing with me for a while, you might have heard me use that term before. Tapas, some of us associate that with yummy, delightful Spanish appetizer small plates. But in the tradition of yoga, tapas is the inner fire that burns in your core and ignites energy. And it's what motivates you to show up to your practice and to commit to it fully. It's really, really close to this idea in Judaism of enthusiasm or zerizut. We're going to start in Sukhasana in a seated position. Please sit with your right shin in front of your left shin. If you feel some compression in your lower back, that's where you can grab onto one of your blocks or your books and sit up to elevate your spine, relieve some of the compression in your lower back. Put your hands on top of your knees with your palms facing up and inhale through your nose and exhale out your mouth. Inhale through your nose and exhale out your mouth. Let's do it again. Inhale and an audible exhale. And continue that slow and steady cycle of breath. And I would like to invite you to let your mind settle on a ritual in your life that brings you joy or meaning. And I'm using the word ritual very loosely. A ritual could be the cup of coffee in the morning newspaper that you drink and read to start your day. It could be an instrument that you've dedicated part of your life to mastering and playing. 
could be a craft that you enjoy, or it could be a religious ritual. And take a moment to trace the history of that ritual and your practice. And first, let your mind settle on a peak moment in your relationship to this ritual, a time or an instance where it was just all clicking, your motivation was there, the joy it brought you or the meaning you discovered was just enormous. Inhale through your nose and exhale out your mouth. Take another inhale and exhale. And as you continue to trace your history with this ritual, can you identify a valley? or even a plateau, a time when your energy just wasn't there with this ritual, felt mundane, felt caught up in the repetition, or just a lack of inspiration. And without judgment, with curiosity, just observe in your reflection how you responded to that valley or that plateau. Continue to breathe. Switch the cross of your shin so that your left shin is in front of your right shin. So what we are going to be exploring today is, is the sense of zerizut, of enthusiasm, zeal, and how we can approach our practices, our lives, our relationships, our rituals, with the recognition that they should be more like a marathon and less like a sprint. So how do we build and sustain our energy? One of the prominent scholars of Musar who we are bringing into our yoga practice during these weeks, Alan Marinus, observes that proper positive balanced enthusiasm is action done with a full throttle once review, consideration, and decision have set you on the right course. So we select, we pick these rituals that bring us joy that which we find meaning with careful consideration, and then we put our all into it. We're going to look at what that means today. Take another deep inhale and exhale. If your eyes were closed, open them and let's stand up. We're going to start today in Tadasana with just some warm up stretches. So root down through your feet. And I'm gonna suggest that you start with your feet hip width apart, root down through your feet, lift up with your kneecaps, arms alongside your torso, palms facing towards the front of the room, broaden your collarbones and pull your shoulder blades together, soften your belly, reach up through the crown of your head, and inhale, arms lift up towards the ceiling, palms face in towards each other, arms are alongside your ears, and exhale, 
arms come back down alongside your torso. We're gonna do that a few times. Inhale, arms lift up. And exhale, arms come down. Inhale, arms come up. And exhale, arms down. Inhale, arms lift up. And keep your right arm stretching up to the ceiling as your left arm lowers down alongside your torso. And now take your right arm, lean over to the left, turn your gaze up to the right, stretch alongside the right side of your torso from your right hip to your right shoulder. And then from your right shoulder, shooting out through your right hand towards the left corner of the room. Inhale. And exhale. And again, inhale. And exhale. And with your next inhale, come back up to center as you lift your left arm up to meet your right arm and exhale both arms down. Good job. Inhale, sweep your arms up. And as you exhale, keep your left arm up in the air. Let your right arm descend alongside your torso. Take your left arm, swing it over to the right. Turn your gaze up to the left corner of the room. And now observe that line of energy rooting down through all four sides of both feet. The line of energy from your left hip to your left shoulder and your left shoulder shooting out your left arm and hand towards the right corner of the room. Take two more cycles of breath. And with your next inhale, lift your right arm up to meet your left arm and exhale, both arms come down. To work on loosening up our shoulders a little bit, just start to rotate your shoulders, moving them towards the front of the room, just slowly. And now switch the direction of that rotation, rotating them back. And pause, let's make rotations with our heads. Rotate your head in one direction, sweeping it out, lowering your chin to your chest. We're gonna make about three rotations in one direction. And when your chin is back to your chest, reverse directions. And then pause. Let's come back to our shoulders. Inhale, arms out into a T position. As you exhale, swing your right arm over to the left. Use your left arm to make a hook just above your elbow. Grab onto your upper arm and inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. One more time, inhale. And exhale, arms back out into a T position. This time swing your left arm over to the right. Use your right arm to make a hook around your upper left arm. Again, three cycles of breath. Part of sustaining our enthusiasm, getting into the mood, feeling that motivation, is recognizing the importance of transitions and warm ups. 
as we flow through our rituals and flow through our lives. It'd be lovely if we could always step onto the start line with full enthusiasm. Sometimes we need to build up to it. Arms out into that T position and arms alongside your torso. Stepping at the top of the mat, return to Tadasana to your mountain pose. And I wanna challenge us during this yoga session. We are, and I'm gonna acknowledge, I just had a conversation with Susan, um, one of the yogis in the virtual yoga studio. We were talking about sun salutations and the challenge of them. That is gonna be one of the common uh, set of movements we are gonna engage in throughout our practice today. And that's really intentional. There's so much repetition in these sun salutations. And if you don't know what a sun salutation is, I'm gonna walk you through it in a moment. And the challenge today is to recognize that showing up is great, but not enough to really capture this idea of enthusiasm. As some of my yoga teachers like to say, don't phone it in. So as we go through the series of poses, observe the extent to which you're truly showing up, not just in body and physical presence, but with mind and soul as well. We're gonna start with half sun salutation. Step your feet together, big toes touching, heels a few inches apart. Inhale, arms up. And exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come back down. Again, inhale, arms up. This is a half sun salutation. Exhale, folding forward. Your hands drop to the floor your ankles or your shins. And it's early in our practice. You can have a bend in your knees if that helps to make these poses more accessible. Inhale, come halfway up, flatten your back. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come down. Again, inhale, arms lift up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. Utita Hastasana. And exhale, arms come down in Tadasana. Pause for a moment. Rabbi Shlomo Wolbe says that a mitzvah delayed or done unenthusiastically is not a mitzvah. It could go wrong, but one, in fact, it's already one that has gone wrong. It's a second rate performance that has already been contaminated. It's daunting. So as we flow through these sun salutations to really put our heart into it, they need to be done with enthusiasm. So we're gonna flow through the half sun salutation two more times, inhale, arms up, observing where your energy is, exhale, folding forward, inhale, come halfway up, exhale, folding forward, Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come down. So what's this half sun salutation really about? It's about cultivating the breath. So we're gonna do it one more time. And this time I'm just gonna cue the breath and you supply the movement. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale and exhale, inhale, and exhale. 
Good job. We're going to move on to sun salutation C. Adding on more movement. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward into Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Come halfway up, flatten your back. Exhale, fold into Uttanasana. Bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your left leg back. Lower your left knee down. Untuck your left toes. Inhale, rise up with your torso and your arms into Anjane Asana. This is a high lunge pose. Exhale, arms come down. Hands frame your front foot. Tuck your left toes. Lift your left knee up. Step your right leg back to meet your left leg. Lower your knees. Let's all start with a modified plank pose. And some of you can keep this modification as we flow through the practice. Inhale, shift your torso forward. Exhale, bend your elbows, lower onto your chest. Untuck your toes. Inhale, root your hands down. Lift your chest up into low cobra. Exhale, bring your chest and heart back down. Tuck your toes, root into your hands, lift back up onto your knees, and then shift your hips up and back. Come into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. And then inhale, draw your left knee into your chest. Step your left foot forward. Lower onto your right knee, untuck your right toes. Inhale, lift your torso and arms up, back into Anjane Asana. Exhale, hands come down and frame your front foot. Tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up, and then step your right foot forward to meet your left foot. You're back in Uttanasana in forward fold. Inhale, Come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward into Uttanasana. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up, Uttita Hastasana. And exhale, arms come down in Tadasana. Mazel tov. That was a full sun salutation C. We're going to do that a couple more times. Feet together, standing in Tadasana. Start with a cycle of breath. Inhale and exhale. And inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up, flatten your back. Exhale, folding forward. Bend your knees, flatten your palms. This time, inhale, step your right leg back. Lower onto your right knee, untuck your right toes. Inhale, lift your torso and arms up into Anjane Asana. Exhale, lower your hands down, frame your left foot, tuck your right toes, right knee comes up. Step your left leg back into plank or modified plank. And you can either shift your hips up and back or take the vinyasa through Chaturanga, low cobra or upward facing dog, and then tuck your toes, shift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. Inhale, draw your right knee into your chest, step your right foot forward between your palms, lower your left knee down, untuck your left toes, inhale, lift your torso and arms up, and exhale, hands come down, frame your front foot, tuck your left toes, left knee up, step your left foot forward to meet your right foot. You're in forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, folding into Uttanasana. Inhale, root your feet into the ground, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come down, Tadasana. Again, 
Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, Uttanasana, flatten your palms into the ground. Step your left leg back. And you decide you can either lower onto your left knee or keep your left knee up. Rise up, either into high lunge or crescent pose. Exhale, hands come down, they frame your front foot. Step your right leg back, meet in plank or modified plank. And then take the vinyasa or go directly into downward facing dog. Inhale, draw your left knee into your chest. Step your left foot forward. And you can either lower your right knee onto the ground or immediately inhale up into crescent pose. You're deciding what serves your body, what is igniting your enthusiasm. And then exhale, lower your hands to frame your front foot. If your right knee is down, tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up, and then step your right foot forward. You're back in Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, come halfway up. Exhale, fold forward into Uttanasana. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come down. You're back in Tadasana. Pause for a moment. Alan Marinus teaches, we get drugged in unconsciousness by repetition. And lest these rituals become dead acts, Rituals like prayer and observances need to be regularly boosted with an infusion of enthusiasm. To live with spiritual integrity and authenticity requires that you break through the smothering curtain of routine. You'll do that by consciously ticking up your enthusiasm a notch. So there's this recognition in the practice of yoga, in the practice of Judaism, in the practice of other religions, or in the practice of an instrument or a craft or an art or a sport. There's so much repetition. What do we need to do to kick it up a notch and boost and maintain our enthusiasm? Sometimes the answer is to slow down, to return to the breath, to back off. Other times it's to add variations to spice it up. We're gonna do one more sun salutation C, adding on a variation. See what that does to your sense of intention and focus, enthusiasm and zeal. Starting in Tadasana, inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, folding forward, bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your right leg back. Lower onto your right knee, untuck your right toes. Inhale, lift your torso up. Advanced practitioners, you can be in crescent pose. And then exhale, lower your hands down, root your right palm into the mat. Inhale, twist open to the left side of your mat. Your top shoulder stacks on top of your bottom shoulder. Rotate your bottom ribs up towards the ceiling. And then exhale, left hand comes down, frames your front foot. Tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up. Step your left leg back, you're in plank or modified plank, and either flow through the vinyasa or meet in downward facing dog.
Inhale, draw your right knee into your chest. Step your right foot forward, lower onto your left knee, untuck your left toes. Advanced practitioners are moving into crescent. Inhale, lift your torso and arms up. Exhale, hands come down. Frame your front foot, root your left palm into the ground, rotate over to the right. Stack your right shoulder on top of your left shoulder. Advanced practitioners are tucking their toes. Your left knee is lifted up. You're straightening your left leg, pressing back through your left heel. Wherever you are, one more cycle of breath. And then lower your right hand to frame your front foot. If your left knee is on the ground, tuck your left toes. Lift your left knee up and then step your left foot forward to meet your right foot. You're in forward fold. Inhale halfway up. Exhale folding forward. Inhale root into your feet. Rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come down. Tadasana. Good job. We've completed our sun salutation. C's, we're going to move into sun salutation A in just a moment. Take a couple cycles of breath, inhale and exhale. Sun salutation A, inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward, bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your right leg back. Step your left leg to meet it. You're in plank position. If you're taking the vinyasa, inhale, shift your torso forward. Bend your elbows, lower halfway down. Roll over your toes into upward facing dog. And then exhale, tuck your toes. Shift your hips up and back. Downward facing dog. At any point, we're gonna be here for three cycles of breath, but at any, any point, if you need to back off, if you need a break, lower your knees onto the ground, shift your hips back onto your heels, and take a couple cycles of breath in child's pose. One more complete cycle of breath in sun salutation A, and then turn your gaze between your palms. Inhale, step your right leg forward. Step your left leg to meet it. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come down. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward, bend your knees, flatten your palms, step your left leg back, right leg to meet it. You're in plank or modified plank. Blocks are underneath your hands if you have sensitive wrists. And then shift your torso forward, bend your elbows, lower halfway down, roll over your toes as you inhale into upward facing dog. And then tuck your toes, shift your hips up and back, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Three cycles of breath. Turn your gaze between your palms. Inhale, step your left foot forward. Step your right foot to meet it. You're in forward fold. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, 
arms down. Again, inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward, bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your right leg back. Step your left leg to meet it. You're back in plank position. Inhale, shift your torso forward, bend your elbows, lower halfway down. Inhale again as you roll over your toes into upward facing dog, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. And exhale, tuck your toes, shift your hips up and back, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale. And exhale. Start to rotate your heels towards the side of your mat. It's going to help you to spin your inner thighs towards the back of the room. And now bend your knees, lower them onto the ground. Untuck your toes, shift your hips back onto your heels. Nestle your torso between your thighs. Lower your forearms onto the ground and forehead on the ground. And let's pause in Balasana, child's pose for a moment. It's Shabbat, so there's got to be a story. It's part of the Jewish tradition of Shabbat. So there's a wonderful story in the Jewish tradition that emphasizes this importance of enthusiasm, of tapas, in each thing that we do. And the story is about a carpenter, a really accomplished, very highly skilled carpenter who's done amazing work constructing houses and she is ready to retire. And she's looking forward to spending the rest of her days with her family, with her book collection, her music, and her boss, the contractor, comes to her and says, I need you on one more job. And she says, no, no, no. This last house was my last house. I'm done, I'm ready to retire. And the boss begs and pleads and says, please, just one more house, one more house. And finally, she agrees to do it. But her heart's not really in it. So the materials that she assembles, they're not the finest materials. The measurements she takes, she's not really paying attention. She goes about building this house. And after a period of time, the house is built. Breathe in and out. We're going to pause for a moment until we reach the end of the story. Start to walk your fingertips forward, flatten your palms, forearms lift off the ground, shift your torso forward, tuck your toes, shift your hips up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. I'm sure you're on the seat wondering what happens to this house. Turn your gaze between your palms, step one foot forward, step the other foot to meet it, inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms down. So this carpenter has built this house and says to her boss, the contractor, I'm done. And the contractor says, this house is my retirement gift to you. May you live in it until the end of your days. And it's this really interesting lesson, it's supposed to be this amazing moment. It emphasizes the importance of really putting our heart and soul into every commitment we take and into our practices. 
So we're going to flow through another sun salutation. Bringing your tapas, your heat, your energy to it. Yes, this is now about our seventh or eighth or maybe 12th sun salutation, but it's the first one we're doing right now. What do you need to do to make this one here and now meaningful? Inhale, arms up. There's no clear answer. Exhale, folding forward. This is the challenge of our practice. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your left leg back. Step your right leg to meet it. You're in plank position or modified plank. Inhale, shift your torso forward. Bend your elbows, lower halfway down. Inhale, roll over your toes into upward facing dog. You can always skip this part, tuck your toes, shift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. Three cycles of breath. Root into your palms and lift up through your arms into your shoulder sockets. Press your thumb, second, third, fourth, fifth finger evenly into the ground. Turn your gaze between your palms. Step your left leg forward your right foot to meet it, forward fold. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come down, Tadasana. We're gonna take a break from our, to the, our Surya Namaskars, our sun salutations. Step into the center of your mat, the horizontal way. And step your feet out about three and a half to four feet apart. If you're on the shorter side, it's all relative. Uh, you want your feet a little bit closer together. Prasarita Padottanasana, wide-legged forward folds. Start with your hands on your hips. Draw your elbows in towards each other. Inhale, lift your heart and chest up. And exhale, hinging at your hips, folding forward. Lower your hands from your hips to the floor. Start on your fingertips. And then start to flatten your palms, widen your stance to bring the floor closer to you. Walk your hands back. Have your fingers in line with your big toes. Depending on your flexibility, you might be able to bend your elbows. Lower the crown of your head to the ground. This is Prasarita Padottanasana A. Inhale and exhale. And inhale and exhale. And inhale and exhale. Hands back up to your hips. Elbows coming towards each other as you lift your torso up. And exhale. Good job. Prasarita Padottanasana C. Just going to make one modification, one change, but it's a very similar pose. Interlace your fingers behind your back. Flatten your palms in towards each other. Press them into each other. Start with a bend in your elbows. Inhale, lift your chest and torso up. Exhale, folding forward. And as your torso comes down, knuckles float up towards the ceiling and your arms straighten. Lower the crown of your head towards the ground. 
And as yogis, think about that inner flame, that tapas, burning bright. Is it fierce? Is it dim? Notice where you're at. Distribute the weight of your body evenly onto your feet. Take one more inhale. And exhale as you start to lift your torso back up. Release the interlace of your fingers. And rotate your entire right leg out to the right side of the room. Rotate your back foot in about 45 degrees. You want the heel of your front foot in line with the arch of your back foot. So take a moment to look. Arms come out into a T position. Inhale, reach your right arm and body forward as your hips go towards the back of the room. And exhale, lower your right hand onto your right shin, ankle, or the ground and lift your top arm up. Trikonasana triangle pose. Let's work on our foundation. The foundation of a yoga pose is whatever part of your body is attached to the ground. So press your front foot into the ground. Specifically press the big toe of your front foot down and root into all four sides of your back foot. One more inhale. And exhale, rise up. Rotate your right foot and leg to be parallel with your left leg. And second side, rotate the entire left leg towards the back of the room. Your back foot in 45 degrees, heel to arch alignment. And then inhale, reach your left arm forward. Your hips go towards the back. Lower your left hand to your shin, your ankle or the ground. Rotate your top arm up and your back in trikonasana, triangle pose. So rooting down through your foundation through your feet. And now let's work on the twist. Lower your hand to your bottom ribs. Scoop your bottom ribs up towards the ceiling. Re-extend your top arm up. Two more cycles of breath. Take another inhale and exhale, lift your torso up, arms back out in that T position. Rotate your left foot to be parallel with your right foot, hands back onto your hips. And we're gonna return to Prasarita Padottanasana, these wide-legged forward fold, folds. Now rotate, step your heel toe your feet in a little bit Narrow your stance to closer to three to three and a half feet. Inhale, lift your heart and chest up. Exhale, folding forward. Take your second and third finger, use them as a hook to grab your big toes. Pull your big toes up, but press down through your big toes. So your second and third finger are going to pull up but you're fighting back with your big toes to press down. Start to bend your elbows out towards the side as you lower the crown of your head down. Prasarita Padottanasana D. Few more cycles of breath. So again, one of the strategies 
to maintain our enthusiasm, our motivation, is to find the variations of our practice, recognizing that so much of our lives, our routine, especially, I don't know about you, but life in pandemic is the biggest living example of the movie Groundhog Day. So what are the variations that you can introduce to preserve the spice of life? One more inhale. Exhale, hands come up to your hips and lift your torso up. So in each one of these wide-legged forward folds, our stance is essentially the same. You feel the stretch in your hamstring but we're adding these different variations of how we position our hands, our fingers, how we touch our feet. So we're gonna do one more. We're gonna introduce a twist. Start with your hands on your hips. Inhale, lift your heart and chest up. Exhale, hinge at your hips, fold forward. Lower your hands towards the ground. Press your right hand into the ground. You might need to expand your stance, widen your stance. Press your right hand into the ground, left hand on your hip. Start to rotate the right side of your torso over to the left side of the room, and then lift your left arm up. Prasarita Padottanasana with a twist. Parvrita Prasarita Padottanasana, a revolved wide legged forward fold. Couple more cycles of breath. With your next exhale, lower your left hand towards the ground. Now press your left hand into the ground. Take your right hand onto your right hip. Rotate your left ribs over to the right. Press firmly into all four sides of your feet. Remember, that's your foundation. And now your foundation also includes your left hand. Reach your right arm up towards the ceiling. Parvrita Prasarito Padottanasana. Revolved wide-legged forward fold. Three cycles of breath. One more inhale. Exhale, lower your right arm back to the ground. Hands come onto your hips and inhale, rise up and step your feet together. And pause for a moment. So I want to acknowledge this idea of working on the soul trait of enthusiasm. One of the reasons that it's so challenging is that enthusiasm is not a switch that you can just flip on. And it's certainly not anything that I as an instructor can command. And the wisdom and psychology in Judaism, in yoga and life that surrounds enthusiasm and motivation is to release the sense of the idea that you can command it, that you can just flip it on. And instead to take a long look at what obstructs it. What is getting in the way of your enthusiasm? And that's where the work is done. Is it an injury? Is it an element of stress? Is it a fear? Is it a past experience that's holding you back? How can you work on all of those roadblocks, clear the way, so that your tapas, your motivation and enthusiasm can shine through. And so it is time to return to our sun salutations.
We're going to work on sun salutation B. Starting with your feet together, standing at the top of your mat. Inhale, bend your knees, lower your tush down, lift your arms up, come into Utkatasana, chair pose or lightning pose. Inhale, exhale, straighten your legs, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, folding forward, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your right leg back. Step your left leg to meet it. You can take the vinyasa. Otherwise, I'm going to suggest that you go immediately into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale, reach your right leg up and back. Exhale, bend your right knee, draw your right knee into your chest and step your right foot forward. Lower your back heel onto the ground, heel to heel alignment. Inhale through into your feet, lift your torso and arms up, bend into your right knee. This is Virabhadrasana one. The modification is to lower your left knee down and return to Anjane Asana. This is what we did at the start of the practice. Otherwise, you're in warrior one, lower your hands, frame your front foot, left, lift your left heel up and step your right leg back. Take the vinyasa or come into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, draw your left knee into your chest. Step your left foot forward. If you're going for the modification, you're lowering your right knee down and lifting your torso up. Otherwise, lower your right heel onto the ground and rise up into warrior one, Virabhadrasana one. And then exhale, lower your hands, frame your front foot, lift your right heel up. Step your left leg back, plank position. Chaturanga to Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. And everyone tuck your toes, hips up and back, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale and exhale and inhale. And exhale, inhale, turn your gaze between your palms. Exhale, step your right foot forward. Step your left leg to meet it. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, bend your knees, sit your tush back. Lift your torso and arms up. You're back in Utkatasana. And then exhale, root into your feet, rise up, and arms come down. So that's a full sun salutation B, Surya Namaskar B. But before we go on to repeat it, I want to share a critical insight that was taught to me about how to approach Jewish education. And it's something that I carry into my yoga practice. This is a lesson that I learned from uh, a teacher with a, a wonderful history of creativity and insight. Two teachers, actually, Joel Grosshaver and Vicki Kelman. And they make an important distinction. They say, know what is the essence of a Jewish practice and what is the popular form of its expression. So again, they urge us to consider what is the essence of our practice and what's the popular expression. And in Judaism and in yoga, we need to seek the essence. That's what we're seeking. We don't always have to fulfill the form. And a popular example that Vicki Kalman, who is a renowned family educator uses, is she was teaching at a, a family Shabbat retreat at camp and talking about the importance of celebrating Shabbat and talking about the essence of Shabbat. 
And one parent said, you know, I so want to observe Shabbat with my family, but the idea of preparing a formal dinner and putting a tablecloth on the table and setting the table with all the plates and knives and forks and all that cutlery and making a three, four course meal. I'm raising a young family. I just can't do it. And Vicki says, Shirley, that's the name of the parent who was voicing this concern. Shirley, bring home a pizza. What Vicki was teaching in that moment is the difference between the essence of Shabbat, which is slowing down time, being together, practicing gratitude, being joyful, and the form of Shabbat, which for many people includes a white tablecloth and a fancier meal, but the form doesn't need to be that way. We're gonna to return to Sun Salutation B. And I wanna encourage you to think of what is the essence of this series of poses? And is the form suiting you? And if the answer is that the form is not suiting you, what modifications do you need to make? Sun salutation B. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your right leg back. Left leg to meet it, plank position. Inhale, shift your torso forward, bend your elbows, lower halfway down. Inhale, roll over your toes, upward facing dog. Exhale, shift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg up and back. Exhale, step your right foot forward. Lower your left heel onto the ground. Remember that one modification that might serve you well is instead to have your knee on the ground, your left knee on the ground. Inhale, rise up into warrior one. Sink into your right knee. Lower your hands, frame your front foot. Lift your left heel up. Step your right leg back. Flow through the vinyasa. and then meet in downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg up and back. Draw your left knee in, step your left foot forward, lower onto your right heel. Inhale, root into your back foot and front foot as you rise up, lift your torso up, arms come up to frame your front ears. Exhale, hands come down, Lift your right heel up, step your left leg back, plank position, and either downward facing dog or shift your torso forward, bend your elbows, lower halfway down, roll over your toes into upward facing dog, and then tuck your toes, shift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. Inhale, turn your gaze between your palms. Step your left foot forward. Step your right foot to meet it. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come down. You're in Tadasana. What is the essence of these poses? Your answer might be cultivating your breath. It might be taking time for spada yaya, for self-reflection. 
It might be moving your body in a way that aligns with your mind and soul. Doesn't need to be married to the form of the specifics of these sun salutations. And so we have arrived at our peak pose. And our peak pose is Yogi's choice for you to select the sun salutation or the variation of one that serves you and that captures your zerizut, your tapas. What can you do right now at this moment in your practice that ignites your motivation, that features it? How can you remove the barriers to let that shine through? So whether it's sun salutation C with the low lunge, traditional sun salutation A, if you want to do sun salutation B with your warrior poses, you do you. So please begin when you're ready and we'll meet back in Tadasana. Start to wrap up your series. You decided to come into child's pose, which is awesome. Start to awaken your body. And meeting in Tadasana. So it's all relative. I hope you found a sun salutation that helped you discover and claim the essence of our yoga practice in a form that suits you. Let's do one more half sun salutation to bring us down onto the ground. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Bend your knees, start to squat down. And then come down onto your tush, extend your legs forward. Bend your right knee, stamp your right foot outside of your left thigh. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, lower your right hand in back of you. Fingertips point towards the back of the room. And exhale, lower your left hand onto your right knee. Root into your back hand to lift your torso and the crown of your head up. And then as you exhale, spin your left ribs over to the right. Inhale, reaching up through the crown of your head. Exhale, rotating your right shoulder towards the back of the room. One more inhale. And exhale, come back to the center. Lift your right foot up. Extend your right leg out. Bend your left knee. 
Step your left foot outside of your right thigh. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, lower your left hand down and back a few fingertips point towards the back of the room. Inhale, lift up through your right arm and then lower your right hand to your left knee as you twist over to the left. Those of you that want a deeper form of this pose, you could hook your right elbow outside of your left knee. And the inhales lengthen your spine and torso and head towards the ceiling. And your exhale is a vehicle to deepen the twist over to the left. So take one more cycle of breath. Take another inhale. And then exhale, come back to the center and extend your left leg out. It's time for Shavasana. And I want to offer a restorative Shavasana. So you can use your blocks to form a letter T. Place your pillow on top of your blocks. Scoot your hips to the edge of your pillow. Bend your knees, extend your legs out. Lower your back onto the pillow and the blocks. Let your arms fall beside you. Extend your legs out towards the front of the room. Let your ankles roll open, palms face up towards the ceiling, and settle into your Shavasana. So this is an option. Alternatively, you can place the pillow underneath your knees. That's an option. You can lie down flat on your back and place the pillow on top of your hips to just bring some weight down and help you sink into the mat. You decide which version of Shavasana suits you best. Let your eyes close. Start to wiggle your toes and wiggle your fingers, bringing some life back into your body. Draw your knees into your chest and rotate onto the right side of your torso. Push yourself up into a seated position. One shin stacked in front of the other. Hands on your knees, palms facing up. And I want to end with a teaching from yoga instructor Barry Rissman who says the following, enthusiasm is rooted in approaching life with a sense of wonder, vigor, and curiosity. 
It's a way of approaching life as a student, open to learning and growth from every experience. When we bring these perspectives to practice, we discover and rediscover the bandwidth of what yoga has to offer us at every moment. We're able to shift our practice to serve us at every stage of our lives. All this reinvigorates and sustains our enthusiasm for practice. What I appreciate about those words is that Barry is applying them to the tradition of yoga. I think it's just as applicable to so many other traditions and spiritual paths that we might travel. And I've certainly experienced in my Jewish practice that there are times where the repetition, or even if it's not repetition, just showing up to perform a mitzvah or engage in a practice it's challenging. It's hard to bring your motivation. So again, what is obstructing the way? What barriers can we remove so that we can bring our full selves to our practice? Press your palms together in the center of your chest. Thumbs dig into your breastbone. Inhale. And exhale. And let your mind settle on one of the barriers that you can work on removing so that you can show up in mind, body, and spirit. Seal that in as your kavana for your week, for your month. Let your chin fall to your chest. And namaste, Shabbat Shalom. It's such a pleasure as always.